what's up youtube what's good what's going on um look so this is a part of the series the art of mastery series all right so if you haven't tapped into the other part two part one go tap into both of them man up there go tap into them um this whole playlist is basically something i put together for anybody's looking to be a mastermind Okay, so the art of mastery. Move my shit right here. The art of mastery, all right? So make sure you hit that subscribe button, like button, all of that shit. It'll help out a whole lot with the algorithm of this YouTube channel. So look, so this one, part three, if you checked out part one and part two, check out this one right now, part three. So... The last one was about finding your calling, right? Finding your calling, right? So you found your calling. Now it's time that you find an apprenticeship, okay? So to be an ideal mentor, I mean, to be an ideal apprentice, you gotta act as a hacker, right? So you need to act as a, hack, as a hacker in your 20s. So what does that mean? You fell forward and you try everything. So you gotta be unafraid to fail. So for me, I've been here multiple times, man, where I've thrown businesses out there and you know, the ones where I didn't have a mentor, they didn't succeed too well. Um, that's not necessarily true because with Pacific Home Buyers, when I do in real estate, I didn't have a mentor for this shit, but I'm gonna talk about that, how if you don't have a mentor, what you need to do. So when you are looking for an ideal apprentice, apprenticeship, you need to act as, an, as a hacker in their 20s. Fail forward, try everything. Try everything you can to keep trying to make something happen, all right? You gotta be unafraid of failure, completely unafraid of failure. So that leads into something, man. Mozart, he didn't have his first masterpiece until after 10 years of working. So if you talk to classical experts, people that are really into classical music, they will tell you that Mozart didn't have his first masterpiece until after 10 years, 10 years of uh, practicing and having an apprenticeship. You feel me? So understand that, man. This whole let me get, get rich quick scheme or let me become a mastermind or let me be a overnight celebrity or overnight success, that shit is bullshit. You feel me? So for some of y'all that's been in business for just two or three years and you're looking to make this million dollars or you know, you're looking to be a billionaire in three years, it's not gonna happen like that. It's not. It's not gonna happen. So like I said, the first part of this series was about um, breaking and finding your, your, uh, your calling. Having your, finding your calling. So you found your calling. So now it's like, look, I gotta look for an apprenticeship and it'd be an ideal apprentice, an ideal mentee, right? You gotta act as a hacker, act as a hacker in their 20s, fail forward, be unafraid of failure. See, if you're scared of failure, and this is probably a completely different video. If you're afraid of failure, you will never move forward in anything in life. If you're afraid to take risks, you will never move, you'll never be great at anything. You gotta be fearless. And I'm not saying just get out there and throw caution to the wind and just say, fuck it. No, you gotta do your due diligence. First part of this series, part one, I talked about your daily systems. What you gotta do, you gotta have your daily systems in place. Number two, number two, what is that? Finding your true calling, finding your calling. And then number three is this, man. You gotta be, you gotta find your ideal apprenticeship. You know what I mean? So the, I'm gonna give you this quote and this is something I think is really dope. And like I said, this whole series came from me reading um, Mastery by Robert Greene, all right? So quote, one repays a teacher badly if one remains only a pupil, unquote. And Nietzsche said that shit, you know what I mean? And that's some real deep out of shit. So let's talk about it. The ideal apprenticeship, you had that already. So let's talk about the mentor's dynamic. So a mentor, 
So with the mentor's dynamic, the, the dynamic between a mentor and a protege, the mentor and the protege dynamic is extremely important. Extremely important. All right? Um, you want to get to the point where you out, you out, uh, not even so much out, but you surpass your mentor. You feel me? That's the whole point. Your mentor should be somebody that wants you to surpass them. Now, if you got a mentor and they're selfish and they just want to give you a little bit of the game, just a little bit to where you can't even grow, that's not the right mentor for you. You want somebody that is going to show you the game and they want you to do outdo them. Perfect example. A lot of the mentors that I've chosen, um, I've chosen, I've chose were people that wanted me to do better than them. And I've had different mentors in my life for different shit. So my first mentor is Scott Wells when I was 15. I worked at a gym in the Bay Area called Bayfront Fitness. And I was 15 and I just wanted to make enough money to where I could buy some clothes. This is the year 2000. So he withheld two of my checks and he got me a mutual fund. I'm gonna jump 15, I didn't know what the fuck a mutual fund was. I learned so much about long-term investment that summer than any other time in my life. My second mentor was, was my man, Tim House. So this is when I'm 22. I'm learning about the music industry. I learned a lot about the music industry from Tim House, okay? Um, and then that leads into this. So choosing the wrong mentor can have a net negative impact on you. So if you choose the wrong person, man, you're going you're gonna to suffer. You're going to suffer. The, the ideal mentor is going to want you to do better than them. They're going to, um, I don't know, they're just going to, they're, they're not going to be a yes man. They're not going to kiss your ass. They're going to basically tell you the real. They're going to be the real shit. Um, so you want to choose a mentor who has, um, who's going to give you the game, but also not kiss your ass. You know what I mean? You don't want a yes man mentor. You don't want somebody that's going to baby you. You know what I mean? Because when you're learning something new and you want to become a master at something, you need somebody that's going to be a little rough. Tough love. All right? So one thing you want to do is you want to gaze into the mentor's mirror. So what does that mean? Suffering is a prerequisite towards enlightenment. So when you suffer, like I'm telling you, when I first got into real estate, and this is a perfect example, I didn't have no mentor when I got into real estate. I didn't have the money to, at the point, at that time, to afford to get one. The mentors that I would have wanted, they would have costed, you know, 10, 15K. I didn't have that at the time. So I had to teach myself. So if you can't find a mentor, you got to teach yourself. And I'm looking at my notes right now. So if you can't find a mentor, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to become your own teacher, which means you're going to do way above what the average person would do. You have to read a whole lot of books, a lot of podcasts, a lot of YouTube. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you're going to have to have a high level of self-resilience. You know what I mean? Because you are becoming your own teacher. So that's something I had to do. So when you gaze deep into your mentor's mirror, this is what you're doing. You're, you got to understand that suffering is a prerequisite towards mastery and enlightenment. So you're going to suffer. When I first got into real estate, my first five deals, I didn't, I was failing forward. Just like a hacker in his 20s. You know what I'm saying? Masters suffer towards brilliance. So you're gonna, if you, if you expect to become a master and you expect it to just be an easy process, don't even try, just be ordinary. Don't even try to be extraordinary. But understand that you're gonna have to go through a lot of suffering before the gold comes. Choose a mentor, like I said before, who, cho who shows you tough love. Not somebody that's gonna kiss your ass, you know what I mean? Um, Choose a mentor that doesn't gas you up. I know we live in this time where people are getting participation trophies just for existing. You don't want that type of mentor. You know what I mean? And you want to create a back and forth dynamic between you and your mentor. So, but yeah, man, mentors are, are truly important. But if you can't find a mentor towards your mastery, you need to become an a incredible student. You got to be more than average. You got to pick up every single book. What I did was I couldn't find one in real estate. I couldn't really find one towards wealth building. So what I do, I watch Bob Proctor on YouTube. Bob Proctor is a hell of a, um, 
hell of a mindset coach, business coach, talks about wealth building. Jim Rohn's another one. You know what I mean? These are my virtual mentors. Um, Grant Cardone. These are people that I really, really admire and I don't know, but they become my virtual mentors. And that's the beauty of the internet. You know, you're sitting here watching me on YouTube right now. Um, I'm pretty sure for some of y'all, I will become your virtual mentor. You know what I mean? So if you're looking for someone to help you get towards your mastery, pick up their books. You know, learn from their mistakes. See, the ultimate mentor is someone that is going to tell you about their mistakes. When people buy the varsity class, my course, or they get my coaching, I tell them about my mistakes so that they don't do the same shit. You feel me? I tell them first, look, I, I did this, I did that, I did this. Don't do none of that. See, a mentor is um, helping you out. It can save you years, years of bullshit. So, but look, man, thanks for tapping in. Like, share, comment, and uh, peace and love, y'all.